Welcome to Fight Hustle here. In this video, I'm going to show you the stuff I found last weekend at garage sales and thrift stores. You're really going to enjoy it. Let's start the show. What's up guys and gals, Chris the Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my office and today I'm going to show you an awesome haul that I found last Saturday from garage sales and thrift stores. A lot of these items I classify as good high ticket items. I think you're really going to enjoy the show so make sure you hit the like button and comment down below which one of these items that I'm about to show you is your favorite. Before we get to the content, I'm really excited for two reasons. One, I'm going to show you this awesome haul. Two, my newest guide, high ticket items to bucks is officially launching today. And there's a launch week discount that's awesome, so if you're lucky enough to watch this video in week one of this guide coming out, check out the link below, and I'll also pin the first comment as the discount code for the week. So that's gonna be the cheapest you'll ever see this guide. I definitely want you to pick it up. This guide's basically gonna show you 50 items that are gonna resell for typically $50 or more, so that way you can start making more money with the same time that you put into going to garage sales, yard sales, thrift stores, that kind of stuff. I want you guys to make more. And for that reason, you have to learn what sells for more money. All right, let's get to the haul. I'm going to show you the very first find. I was at a garage sale on Saturday morning. It's one of the very first ones I went to, and I bought two things. I spent $10, and this person was like in total liquidation mode. She was like, you make me an offer for whatever. This thing, I'll show you the first one. I don't know which one to show you first because they're, they're both really cool. So I have a vintage booth in Austin, Texas, and I saw this in her garage sale. It's just a letter M, right? And we know that this stands for money anyway. So this was one of the things that I bought for 10 bucks. It doesn't have lights inside or anything like that uh, or any neon things, but it's still the shell um, of a light that probably went outside of some sort of store. This in my booth could comfortably resell between 50 and and $100 all day. Um, and it was one of the items I purchased for $10. But the other item's pretty cool too. This was actually marked 15 bucks and since I just knew the way she was speaking was like, oh man, she's really gonna get rid of things. Um, I decided to make uh, you know, a $10 deal with the letter M and this thing right here. Now, I'm gonna show you the front of it and you're gonna instantly know what it is. Check it out. Oh, all right. So you kind of see that upside down horseshoe slash Omega symbol. That stands for Lululemon. And Lululemon uh, is primarily active wear that started as a yoga kind of company and now has just branched out to just all levels fitness and even comfortable workwear as well. Anyways, this right here is just a typical kind of hoodie that they sell at the store, but believe it or not, this kind of thing, if you buy it new, is somewhere around $100, $120. So this was one of the things I, you know, that I spotted immediately. I was like, oh my gosh, like an actual Lululemon. Uh, I speculate it's about size eight women's, maybe six, um, but this thing can resell all day for over 50 bucks, like all day. So really, really awesome score right there. And uh, there's the original tags is 15. And that is definitely uh, way more, it's, way, it's worth way more than 15 already, but it's definitely a good find. Anytime that you see this kind of stuff at garage sales, pay close attention, look for, you know, rips or tears or any weird stains or weird odors, but I, this one was in perfect condition. I couldn't believe it. And the good thing about Lululemon clothing, uh, especially their hoodies, for example, and that kind of hoodie is that they're built a little bit tougher and they're overstitched than normal hoodies that you might see out there by, let's say, Champion, O'Neal, other random brands like that. The Lululemon hoodies are actually built better. They flex better. It's a really good brand, but you have to pay up to get that kind of quality. I'm gonna save the best thing for last, which I thought was really, really interesting. If you watch my Instagram stories at the Bonafide Hustler on Instagram, you're probably gonna know what the last find I'm gonna show you will be, but it's really cool. I'm super proud of it. Um, but let's talk about now thrift stores and what I found at thrift stores this past weekend. This was only two days ago, all right? So these are old Uber, these are Uber fresh, it's uber fresh cheddar, okay? I can smell it, it's just festering in this room. It's uber fresh. So I was at a thrift store at Goodwill, and I picked these up, all right? You might be thinking, eh, Kohan, uh, fake Yeezys, I don't know. Just, you know, just has that kind of eh look to it. If you pay attention, you'll notice this is a very expensive brand. This didn't make it into my shoe guide because it's really hard to find this brand. It's really hard to find the brand Prada, for example, you know, Gucci when it comes to shoes. So those don't make it into my guides because it's not an everyday thing. I like my guides to have things that are repeatable. And so this right here is made by Bally. Very sought after footwear, but not something you see every day. So these are a little bit more off their casual line. 
And a shoe like this, I paid 24 minus 10% or whatever. And a shoe like this is probably gonna resell for over 150 bucks like all day. So super awesome high ticket item right there. And uh, they, they're in great shape. The odd thing about this is that they really fit like a 12, you know, but they're marked as an 11. So if you're selling shoes that you suspect are not the correct size, you can put things like that in your description and I urge you to because that way a person will know, okay, like I'm a size 11, but this person with a size 12 foot speculates that it's more of a 12, that means I might have to wear like a really big sock or maybe I'll just pass on it altogether. Whereas maybe a person with a size 12 foot looks at a size 11 shoe and knows that they can fit better into that versus a 12 Bally, then they're gonna find your listing and buy your item. But anyways, these are really awesome. Uh, if you look at eBay on used Bally shoes, there are thousands of those things sold every 90 days. So a really good brand, hard to find though. Um, and this one even had the B on the side right there. It might stand for Bonafide Hustler. This could be my uh, private label brand. I just never told you about. Now, on, honestly, this is a hard to find, this is a hard to find brand. So I, I didn't put it in my shoe guide for that reason. But nevertheless, you should be aware of Bally. At a Goodwill, also I picked up this. This is this was twenty dollars out the door. It's a 30, thirty-two liter uh, backpack, and it's interesting because it has a very specific purpose to it. So. As we turn it around, you can see that there's this odd looking, like camelback looking thing. So you might be thinking, oh, that's for water or something like that. It's actually incorrect. This is actually a backcountry skiing slash snowboarding backpack. And this thing that you're seeing here has nothing to do with water. It actually has to do with breathing underneath the snow. This is an avalanche backpack, basically. So if you are unfortunate enough to be caught in an avalanche, you can still breathe under the snow with an Avalong or Avalong backpack. That's what this is, it's called an Avalong. And it has like little uh, things on the side here, you know, to where you can breathe in situations where um, you have to wait for rescue, you know, to get to you. We have to breathe in very tight situations like snow. So this is one of the ways that you can kind of survive an avalanche. The other way is with the CO2 backpacks that inflate these like wing looking things, or it almost looks like a, a raft behind you made of wings or wings made of a raft material. Um, but those are activated with CO2 cartridges and it allows you to float above the avalanche while it's happening, right? So this one, the, the idea is you'll probably be buried in the avalanche and so you can kind of breathe through this while you're under the snow, while all your friends find you, um, or even the ski patrol, if you have what's called a reco type jacket that has a little transponder looking thing in there. Um, the ski patrol has those devices that can find those reco jackets and they can figure out where you are and dig you out. But in the meantime, you're gonna need to breathe. And so an Avalung or an Avalung backpack will help you do that. If you have the other style of backpack that uses the CO2, then you'll be above the avalanche and you won't, you know, you won't be harmed, you won't be buried or anything like that, but you're gonna have to go through the avalanche as it goes and proceeds down the mountain. Both are pretty bad situations to be in, but backpacks like this can save your life. Anyways, there's a 32 liter um, black diamond, right? Um, Avalon backpacks, probably gonna sell for around 100 bucks or more. So awesome high ticket item. Something you might not know about, not something you see every single day. At the same Goodwill, actually very close to where I found that Avalon backpack, we have this Madewell tote right here. So tote bags are just like this, okay? This is what a tote bag kind of looks like, sling over your shoulders, put whatever you want in it, and uh, you just, you can go to farmer's market with these things, to the beach with these things. I mean, they're just tote bags. You put anything you want in a tote bag, and you typically transport it like this, or you sling it around your shoulder. Um, and there's nothing really to them. You just look down the middle, make sure nothing you know, rips and tears or anything like that. You'll probably see marks and, you know, because these things are used for everyday activities. Um, and this one right here is made by Madewell, and it's a great brand. Madewell has awesome tote bags that on eBay, you know, majority of them are selling for 60 and above. And if you can find the ones with saddle leather, you're looking at 130 plus. So those are the resale values of similar bags that kind of look like this. I, I fully expect to sell this thing for around 80 plus, and I'm into this thing for around $8, I believe. So pretty awesome score. It's very unsuspecting, but if you know about it and you know about Madewell, you need to pick this bag up, you know, pretty awesome. And you can put all your cheddar in it too, which is the best part of a tote bag, is put other profitable items in it. I got two more finds to show you. I don't know which one to put, you know, like last or whatever. I suspect it'll be the last one, clearly. At the same Goodwill, I found the backpack and the tote bag. I stumbled upon this. Now these are tooled leather heritage boot company boots. They were 30 bucks in very good condition, but they were, you know, the person that had these took really good care of them, okay? So this is tooled leather, it looks like that. And it's by Heritage Boot Company, which is an Austin um, boot 
company. I wouldn't say that they're made in Austin because some of them are made in Mexico and then maybe tooled in Austin, um, but a very expensive store in Austin, Texas. It's one of the first stores if you're on South Congress Avenue that you'll see. It's called Heritage Boot Company. Very, very um, hard to find and sometimes custom made boots. So these are really nice cowboy boots, tooled leather, and you know, they have some use on them right here. They were 30 bucks, fully expect to sell these between 150 and about 230-ish, something like that. A very, very nice cowboy boot, something you don't see every single day. You're more likely to find a Luke Casey out there, um, or even like an old gringo as opposed to like a heritage boot company boot. So uh, kind of a harder to find boot. Perfect high ticket item though. Yeah, you gotta get into these kind of things. You know, so a lot of times to make more money, you have to spend just a little bit more to get those high ticket items. And this is a perfect example of like a $30 boot that will sell for around, you know, 150 to 22, 30 ish. Pretty nice looking boot right there. All right, the last and final find, I thought was so, so cool. It's, it was definitely on my Instagram story, very, very nice. Um, it's a vintage, speculated to be vintage, um, wool, all right? Polo Ralph Lauren, uh, it's called like a varsity jacket. Um, really nice, you can see the cuffs look very varsity. The bottom part looks like a you know typical varsity jacket slash letter jacket. This is made out of the same kind of material that a Pendleton jacket would be made out of. You know, nice wool. Um, the interior has that you know good nylon so you can put it on real nice and it doesn't get you all itchy and stuff like that. The hood has a split hood so the zipper is also, you know, you can open up this hood and then you can put it down like to the sides like this. There's little buttons on the side. And you know, it'll look pretty cool. Very Harry Potter-ish. But uh, you know, it reminds me of things like uh, Bape hoodies, you know, when you have a hood that has a zipper like this. But anyways, very, very nice piece. We have the awesome patch right there, the polo patch. This is a one of a kind find, really. Um, in very, very good condition. I wouldn't call it mint, but it's in super condition. Typically when you deal with wool garments, uh, Pendleton jackets, Woolridge gar uh, jackets, things like that, or even Polo Ralph Lauren things, you're gonna have to scan very, very carefully around for holes or parts of the wool that might be anomalies, right? And so I looked this thing over front and back and it was awesome, but I did find a small anomaly on the sleeve. I'll see if I can find it right here for you guys. I mean, it's so small, but I will disclose it. Um, here it is, right here. Okay, so I will disclose it. While not really a hole, it's more of an anomaly or a place where maybe the wool just was a little bit more worn down than normal, but we have a, the sleeve right here, and you can kind of see the anomaly right there. It's not quite a hole, though, but, you know, it's something that I would want to uh, put on my description as being maybe the only flaw that this jacket has. So. Very nice condition, size large, a great size, and um, super collectible as well. I paid $13 at a Goodwill for this thing, and I fully expect that this thing will sell north of 150 bucks or so. I think there's one on eBay right now for around 200 or something. So once that one's gone, you know, mine will be the, probably the only listing left to buy. And we're looking at about 150, maybe more. It just depends who's in the market at that time. I like it though, and it's the perfect kind of jacket, and I'll tell you why, because I could actually wear this for a couple years, and it'll still be worth about 150 or more. That's one of the best things about reselling higher grade clothing, is that if it's the right kind of thing, you can actually wear it around, sport it, take some cool pictures with it, and then still flip it months later, years later, and it'll still retain its value. So I thought this was a really good find. If you watch my Instagram story, you literally see me picking this thing up live, um, and it's pretty cool. So. Perfect example of a high ticket item. The interesting thing about the items that I just showed you is that none of these items are actually in high ticket items two bucks, which is the newest guide that literally drops like right now. So like I said before, if you wanna learn 50 awesome items that will yield you $50 or more, typically in pure profit, then you gotta pick up this guide. These are great items because they get you really pumped up about reselling. So I want you to go pick it up down below if you're lucky enough to find it in launch week, which is actually right now, if you're watching this video um, and it's on launch week, then I'll put the code down below in the first link and I'll also put the first pin comment as the discount as well. Grab a copy of this thing, study it. It's over a hundred slides. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. Now you're not gonna find these items in there, but you're gonna find 50 other items that are really gonna typically yield $50 or more in pure profit. Some of those items, there are a couple items in that guide where um, I made like 975 on one, 975 on another, and the very first time I flipped said item, I made like 600 something, something around there. There's some really super high ticket items in there, but for the most part, these are gonna be items that you're gonna love to resell, that you are gonna enjoy trying to find again, and these are items that just make the hunt super worth it. So yeah, go pick up that guide. It's 
it's down below. But guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully this inspires you to get out there, make some money, and have some fun with what we do. We are hustlers, we are resellers, and a lot of times it can get monotonous. And that's the reason why high ticket items are so cool to resell is because it just keeps you pumped up to find the next one. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Bonafide Hustler. Show me all your cool cheddar finds, and I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustler video. Take it easy. Goodbye!